Hello. This video will discuss and demonstrate IsCobol ODBC for File Server. IsCobol's ODBC for File Server lets you access your COBOL data files from products that use ODBC, such as some of the ones on the screen. These products are all Windows-based, and they use a Windows DSN, a data source name. They also include a SQL engine, so you can access your COBOL data with SQL statements. The ODBC for File Server that I'm going to show you today is a client-installed ODBC driver, and it's one of two products in the IsCobol UDBC group. It works with the IsCobol File Server that is included with our application server. Now, there are some cases where this isn't enough. For instance, if the clients aren't Windows desktops or you need a JDBC access to your data, then you'll need our product called IsCobol UDBC Software Kit. It uses the ODBC driver, but it also includes a SQL Server engine, a SQL client, and a JDBC driver. But usually you'll only need the ODBC client driver, so you'll only install the IsCobol ODBC for File Server, and that's the one I'm showing you in this video. The IsCobol File Server can access data files using the dynamic file handlers that are included in the runtime framework. These file handlers include JISIM, of course, but also other COBOL ISIM files through our connectors. The ODBC client will need extended file information. These are the XML files created when you compile with an EFD switch. To limit the files the ODBC client can see, you can create a text file listing the XML files that you want to give access to. This document is called EFDRMT.dir. The client side connects to the file server process using the IsCobol ODBC client through a DSN. The DSN contains the IsCobol file server host name and port. It also points to the EFD and the data directories on the server. Then products like MSXL use that DSN to gather the data from the server. These are the setup steps. First, you create the XML files with that EFD switch. And then, if you want, you can create an EFD RMT.dir on the server, and then start the IsCobol file server. On the client, you'll install the IsCobol ODBC for file server. You'll create a DSN using the Windows ODBC data source administrator, and then you'll access the data with the application that you've chosen. Now you'll notice that all the products that I'll use in the demo are 64-bit. This is important. The DSN needs to match the bitness of the product you'll use to access the data. For instance, if your MS Excel is 32-bit, then you'll need to use the 32-bit ODBC. The file server version doesn't need to match just the client-side products. Let's take a look at how this works. So let's set up the server. I'm using a Linux server here. I'm in my home directory, and I have a folder called data and another one called XML. I don't want to give my ODBC users access to every file that I have an XML for. So I've created a text file called EFDRMT in the XML folder. And in it, I've listed the three files that I want to give ODBC access to. I'm going to start the file server with this command, isc server. The dash fs denotes the file server. You can start the application server as well at the same time, but in this case, we only need the file server. And my host name is this here. I'll be using that in my DSN. So let's run that. And you can see that my port number is the default 10997. We're going to use that later too. Now on the client side, first we're going to create a DSN. So I'll type ODBC and see I have my choice of a 32-bit or 64-bit ODBC data source. This is where I want to make sure that I have a 64-bit because my Excel that I'm going to use to access it is also 64-bit. We're going to add a DSN and it's going to be a variant ODBC driver for file server. I'll call it as COBOL data. Now, the dictionary directory is not on this machine, it's on my server. 
because these are remote, I will start my directory with a colon and then my directory. And that's where my XMLs are. My server address and the default port. I'll test my connection and it can connect to the server. Now I've given it all the information it needs except where the data is. And that is on the advanced tab. I don't need the colon on this one, just on the earlier screen. So there's where my data is. Click OK and OK. And now my DSN is set up. So let's go to Excel. Open up a blank worksheet. And we'll get the data from data, get data from other sources in ODBC. I'll choose the DSN that I just created and click on OK. And these are the three files that I gave access to. I'm going to click on product and I'm just going to load all of the products as is. I'll click on load and there's my products. Now I told you that you could write SQL statements against your data and so we're going to do that next. We'll start on a new sheet and again data and get data and this time I'm going to use Microsoft Query. You can use either one of these methods to access your DSN and I'll bring over the product again. But instead of returning the data, I'm going to edit the query. So I'll finish. You can see here the SQL that Excel has generated to create this list. I'm going to add order by prod name. And you can see the order changed. And then I'll return the data right there. And there's your new list ordered by the name of the product. I hope that you try out his COBOL ODBC for file server. Contact support or your sales representative and we'll get you an evaluation license. Thank you.